Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorce. Here's a trick question. Who do you love more than anyone else in the whole wide world? Your spouse? Your children? Money? If your answer was anything besides our Lord, now you can begin to understand why the other side is so successful at always winning every major clash of the culture. There can only be three objects of love, and in fact, two of those objects are related. You can only love God and your neighbor or yourself. There are no other options. The other side is expert at loving self. It's exhibited in how deeply and seriously they pursue money, sex, power, fame, whatever. They wake up in the morning thinking about these things, thinking about self. They send enorm spend enormous amounts of energy throughout the day chasing these things, and they go to bed thinking about how they will chase these things tomorrow. Talk about committed. Talk about a deep, undistracted desire. That is one committed bunch. It's why they are so successful at keeping abortion legal, getting same-sex marriage installed as a constitutional right, constantly engineering new and improved birth control while making it more accepted. They are experts in the art of self-love, and they are prepared to defend and promote their cause much better than we are. In fact, if this were Super Bowl, we would get destroyed collectively. Uh, wait, we are getting destroyed collectively. The reason? They are prepared for battle and we are not. Have you ever noticed, for example, how the cause of evil can always mask itself so cleverly in a little pithy slogan on a bumper sticker? No hate, love wins, coexist, save the whales. And then they've gotten so effective they don't even need words anymore. That equal sign, that Darwin fish, that rainbow, that rainbow they ripped off from us. It won't be long before those little stick people with, on the window decals showing a family and kids start appearing, showing two mommies or two daddies with their IVF surrogate womb children in tow. See, the world sits around thinking about this stuff nonstop. They discuss it at their parties. They report on it in their media. They unify themselves in their cause. They take control of the political party, actually both parties. They elect their candidates. They pump out their movies and their TV shows. Why? Because they are committed and dedicated on a scale that we could only ever hope to imagine. They are better prepared than we are, and we lose every time because they are better prepared to defeat us than we are prepared to defeat them. And just like in the Super Bowl, whoever is better prepared wins. It's almost guaranteed. Only dumb luck can prevent any other outcome. The ball bounces weird, their star gets injured, they get a lot of penalties, whatever. The only way to defeat evil is to be better prepared than they are when it comes to the fight just like it is in sports and war. And the only way to be better prepared, the only way, is to be more dedicated and more committed. And the only way to do that is to love our blessed Lord and His Holy Catholic Church more than they love themselves. And more to the point, more than we love ourselves. We don't love the church, truly love it and cling to it and embrace it and defend it, or at least not enough. As the song goes, I would do anything for love. The other side does. We don't. It's that simple. How many hours do we spend in a week, for example, sitting down, studying the faith, seriously studying, committing ourselves to reading, meditating on what we have to read, acquainting ourselves with the arguments of the other side so we can be prepared to respond when necessary and destroy their position intellectually? How often can we be accused of loving so intently that people recognize us as mastering our own wills? Do people look at us and say, boy, he's changed. He seems more, more, I don't know, more serious, more mature. What they mean is holy, but they don't have the vocabulary to express that. But they recognize it. We see a seemingly endless parade of people on the other side we would describe in a general sense or application of the term as intense. They are studied, however mistaken they are in their intellects, they are well studied. They have committed themselves entirely in their wills. They are devoted. 
We aren't. We don't go the extra mile and read more. We don't go the extra mile and pray more. We don't, we don't seek out like-minded people and discuss more. We play too much in the world's sandbox, and then we are saddened or horrified or shocked when the Supreme Court hands down a perverted, evil, immoral ruling. Until we get better prepared, which is to say, love God by loving His holy bride with all our minds, hearts, souls, and strength, get used to more of the same. But when we do become committed, devoted, loving souls, watch out, world. Just watch out. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Much of what has happened in the West these past 50 years is little else than the natural development of the course of events set in motion a few centuries ago. 70 young children under 10 years old who were found at last in a mass grave with their rosary beads in hands.